This video is sponsored by PowerUp. More about them in a moment. Got it. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make three amazing paper airplanes that all work with the power up motors. Now, Imperion 1 is one you maybe have seen before, but this version has fins and it does fly on its own, as well as working with the 2.0 and the 4.0. Hammerhead was featured on the power up channel, but hasn't been featured on my channel yet and is probably the most popular paper airplane to use with the Power Up 4.0. As you can see, it is just absolutely awesome, but it doesn't fly on its own since you need to be able to mount it to the shaft in this way. And then we have Viper, which is an entirely new paper airplane that hasn't been published anywhere. It does fly quite well on its own, and it also works with the Power Up 4.0. If you've been following my channel for very long, you know that I am an absolutely massive fan of the Power Up products. With the 4.0, you can literally take your regular paper airplane and turn it into a smartphone controlled flying machine. You can pilot the paper airplane that you just folded. It is a magical experience. It is the most fun you can have with paper airplanes and I highly recommend them. So if that interests you at all, head over to PowerUpToys.com and you can use the code FF10 to get 10% off your order there. And with that said, let's get back to the video. All you will need in order to fold this version of Imperion 1 is an 8.5 by 11 inch sheet of paper and a pair of scissors to cut the fins. And with that, we will begin by folding the right edge to the left edge. Once you do that, you can go ahead and open your paper up so that your center crease is a mountain crease. And now you're going to fold this top edge here into the center crease and that should make a triangle just like you've seen so many times with so many paper airplanes. And now we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Just like so. And now let me go ahead and do the next step and I'll explain exactly what I've done here. So you can see I obviously just folded that top point down and I landed it on my center crease. But the point is I want to make this crease here about three quarters of an inch above this edge. Once you do that, you can go ahead and open your paper up fold this whole section down just like so along that existing crease and this time crease all the way out to these edges. The next step is a little bit tricky, but you can see we have this diagonal crease here. I'm going to hold this side of the paper flat and I want to reverse that crease. I'm just bending it in the opposite direction, opening it up and you can see I'm not making a new crease there. I'm just opening it up and you have this pocket that doesn't lie flat. So once you get to that point, you can flatten it, landing this crease right here along that edge. Just like so. And your plane should look like that. We'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side now. And there we are. So now I'm going to fold this short little edge here right to this horizontal crease. And I'll do the same thing on the left side. And your plane should look like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold to the center and you can see I'm actually landing this edge right here on my center crease and allowing this flap to pass the center crease. And I'll go ahead and open that up and do the same thing on this side. It should look like that. I'll open that up and now we're going to fold this edge right here to this diagonal crease and I like to leave just a little gap here, the tiniest little gap, which will help us fold these in in the next step. 
So I do one side, do the same thing on the other side. And your paper should look like this. Now I'll go ahead and fold one of these sides in just like so. And you can see when I fold the other side in, we have this tab that crosses over the top of this layer here. And you can see we have a pocket on this side of the plane. And I'm going to slide that tab into the pocket as I close this all up. And that will lock everything together. So now I just fold my plane in half away from myself, just like this. And I make sure that I'm placing a new crease right along that tab that's now inside the pocket. And I can lay it on its side just like this. Now you're going to want to begin your wing crease just a little above the nose of the plane over here and a little more than an, it's going to end up a little more than an inch up the back side here. So it's going to be something like this. You want nice and wide wings. Something like that. You can see the crease I just made. And once I do one wing, I'll go ahead and flip it over and fold the other wing to match. And there you go. So we are almost done with this plane. All we have left to do is cut the fins and stand them. So let's put the wings back in this position. I'm gonna grab my scissors. And I want to start the cut for my fin just about an inch from this back corner here. And I'm going to go diagonally just like this, a little more than an inch into the wing. Might even go just a little farther than that. And once I've cut that one, I want to line my scissors up kind of with that point straight from the edge. And I'm basically going to cut a right triangle out here. So I'm just cutting straight to that point, just like so. And now we are ready to fold our fins. I'm going to fold this up and I want the crease I make to be parallel to that top edge. And once I do one, I'll just flip the paper over, fold the other one to match. And here you go. Stand those up and you have a finished Imperion one. And all we have to do now is attach our power up motor to it. If that's how you want to fly this, this does fly on its own. But of course, everything's cooler when you make it a smartphone controlled airplane. So all you have to do is slide the nose of the plane into that front clip just like so, and you can see our propellers are just off the back edge of this plane. You can adjust your crossbar however you like, and then tape this to the plane. And with that, good luck flying. All you will need in order to fold this plane is an eight and a half by 11 or A4 sheet of paper, and we'll begin by folding the right edge to the left edge. Once you do that, go ahead and open your paper up, fold your top edge into the center to form a triangle. And we're going to do that, of course, on both sides. And your paper should look like this. And we're going to fold this bottom edge now to this point right here, but just make a pinch crease in the middle like so. And that's a reference, so now we can fold our top point to that point there. The next step is just a little bit tricky. We're going to hold this flap vertically. I'm placing my left hand on this flap here and holding these layers in place because I want to actually open this left flap and I'm going to perform a squash fold where I'm landing this crease here, this point, along this line. But this will slide out if you don't hold it in place as you do so. You may need to tap on that point right there to really get it to fan out and flatten. And this is what your squash fold should look like. And we'll go ahead and unfold that. And we're going to do the same exact thing with the other side. So I'm holding this layer flat pulling these layers open and kind of tapping right on that point. 
And now I'm going to squash it so that this crease lands on that crease there. And it should look like this. Now we're going to unfold back to this position and we're going to do what's actually the trickiest step. I'm going to make sure both of these are kind of bubbling out in either direction. We're going to squash fold both sides at the same time and you kind of have to press and the paper will deform in some weird ways at first, but you want to be creasing along this crease here and this crease here and have them kind of buckle outwards. And you'll see as you do this, if you can clean the paper up it should settle into this shape once you get it to just be creasing on this and this and this and this your paper deformed a little bit as you did it but it should settle into this shape and you have this peak in the middle and you can just push it to one side and we'll go ahead and fold this flap here forward push it to the other side and fold this flap forward so I know that was a little tricky, a little messy, but here we are, hopefully you were able to make it with me. And now we have this flap, which we're going to once again, open up and squash fold. And to squash fold this, you may even need to pull down and tap there. The layers are thick enough that applying that tension by pulling down helps to make it a nice and neat squash fold. Okay. And now I'm going to fold this to the left and fold this here to the center. I'll now stand these up, fold the left side to the center in the same way. Okay, and now I'm going to just open each side up and I want to open this flap up here. I'm going to fold this edge here right to that edge. And I can close that back up and it should look just like this. I'll open that up, fold this edge to that edge and close this side up as well. And now we'll go ahead and close this one side up. I'm going to work just one side at a time now. And you can see when I have this diamond here on the top, I'm going to use this point right where this edge intersects that point of the diamond. That is my first reference point. And down here is my other reference point right at this corner. And I'm just folding from one point up here to that point there. just like so. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. And this time I can fold my plane in half and actually match it as I do this. Sorry to be constantly rotating the plane. I'm just putting it in a more comfortable place for me. Okay, and now your plane should look like this. Now I'll go ahead and open the right side up again, and I'm going to reverse this crease here that we just made. And you can see a little section of the paper crosses over this inner diagonal crease. And I want to just fold that section back across that crease. And having done that, I'll repeat those steps on the left side. So I'm opening it up, reversing this outer diagonal crease. 
and then just folding this little section that crosses the inner diagonal crease back over that same crease. Okay, and now we can just fold each side in and you can see what our plane is going to look like. And these tabs here are going to lock our plane together by tucking into these pockets, but you can make it easier by actually unfolding this here and now you have a really big pocket to tuck into. So I like to leave it unfolded, tuck that in, just like so, I'm just sliding that into the pocket and then I fold in on this and you can see you don't want it to go all the way behind this layer here. That'll get it caught and it won't lie flat. So it just goes under itself, just like so. So that one side is locked up. Now I'm going to tuck the flap into this left side, fold in just like so, and here we are. We're now ready to just fold the plane in half and fold our, fing our wings and winglets. Okay, so we're going to start just a little above the nose of the plane and I want to crease to uh, maybe a little more than an inch above the back edge, about two and a half centimeters. That's if I'm using the power up modules, which I am, but you can fold narrower wings than this if you want to fly it without the power up modules. But you want very broad wings when you fly with those modules, it gives it more lift. You can carry the payload of the motor. Okay. And we'll flip the paper over, fold the same on the other side. And now all that's left to do is fold the winglets for the plane. So I'm going to set it upside down like this. And my winglet creases are going to start right at these points and go forward. And I want to make these creases parallel to the center of the plane. And that is just an estimation. Something like that looks pretty good. And once I fold one fin, I can just fold it in half, flip my plane over and fold the other one to match. And here you go. So now we're going to go ahead and attach our power up motor just by sliding this nose into that clip and the layers here at the front of the plane are a little bit thick so it can be sometimes a little tricky to get into the clip but I didn't have any problem there. And if you are flying with the power up modules you definitely want a bit of up elevator here by bending these back edges up slightly. If you aren't using the power up modules you may not need any up elevator at all. You can test your plane and see how it's flying. In order to fold and fly hammerhead, you're going to need an eight and a half by 11 inch or A4 sheet of paper. And you're also going to want a pair of scissors or you need to be good at tearing paper in a straight line. Of course, you're also going to need a power up 4.0 because these are going to be two separate wings that don't connect together without something to connect them to. And of course the power up 4.0 is just awesome. So you want that anyways. Now you'll notice there is an additional clip on this because I'm using the DIY bundle, which you don't have to have, but it does give you the ability to assemble this clip, which lets you slide the rear wing forwards and backwards along the shaft of the plane and make adjustments to its center of gravity, which is great. Your alternative is to tape it in a fixed position to the shaft. And with all of that out of the way, let's begin by folding the paper in half from this right edge to the left edge. And you can go ahead and open your paper up and now fold your top edge to the bottom edge. Once you've done that, you can open it up again and fold your top edge to the crease you just made. And this is where you would cut if you're using scissors, right along that crease you just made. I'm going to fold it back and forth a few times and tear.
Okay, and you should have two strips of paper now looking like this. And we're going to set aside the larger piece of paper for now. And we're going to work with this thin strip. And you can see it is folded in half and we actually want to tear or cut right along that midline as well and split this into two pieces. Okay, and you can see these are identical. We'll set one aside just in case we mess up with the first one, you can use it, but all you need to make the plane is one of these. And I'm actually going to be working with a larger version of this rectangle, just so you can see better on camera what I'm doing, but note that yours will be much smaller than mine. And now we're going to begin by folding the top edge to the bottom edge, just like so. and fold this edge here to your bottom edge to make a triangle. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And it should look like this. I'll now unfold both of these and fold it in half this way. And now I'll open that up and I'm actually opening all the way back up into this position here. And you can see this is already a valley crease, but this here is a mountain crease. And I need to reverse that. And then also reverse this section of this horizontal crease. And I'm basically doing what's called an inside reverse fold, which you can see kind of what that does there. When we close that up, this is going to be kind of a separate fork of two fins. And I wanna do the same thing on the other side here. So it should look like this, and then you can close it up into this shape. Okay, and now I'm going to fold this top edge down. And if you're folding from eight and a half by 11, this should be a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. Of course, I'm folding with a giant one, so mine's bigger, but your measurement should be a little less than a quarter of an inch. If you're folding from A4 paper, think about half a centimeter or a little less than that. And yours should look roughly like this. I'm now going to go ahead and fold it in half so that this layer's on the outside and I'll fold my wing crease here, starting just a little bit above this front edge and sloping toward the back edge a little bit higher up on the back side. It should look something like that. And then I'll flip it over and fold this side to match. And now I'm going to fold this fin up and I want the crease I make to run parallel to this top edge. And that's just a judgment fold. Should be something about like that. And I'll flip it over, fold the other side to match. And there you go, we can open this up, stand the canards, or stand the fins on the canards vertically, and it should look essentially like this. Now we'll go ahead and set this aside for now. You can go ahead and see here are the small ones. This is about what yours should look like. Set this aside for now, and we will work with the larger sheet of paper. So now I'm just going to fold this in half along that existing crease, and I'm going to stand this top section here vertically using the crease we already have. And I want to squash fold by pushing on this left spine of the paper here, and I'm going to bring this crease right here down to land along that edge. And with the paper in this orientation, I'm now going to fold this edge here to land right along that edge. And I'll do the same thing on this side, folding this to right there. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and open these up and unfold all the way back into this position here. And now I'm going to fold right along this outermost diagonal. 
and just continue that crease all the way to this edge. And as I do that, you can notice this diagonal crease will line up with my center crease. And I want to make sure those things are perfectly aligned before I make this crease all the way to the outer edge. And then I'll unfold and do the same thing on the other side. So this is the crease I'm extending all the way to the other edge. And as I line this crease right up with my center crease, that's how I know I have everything properly aligned. And I can make that crease all the way across. Okay, and I'll open that back up. And now I'm going to fold this edge here to that diagonal crease. And I like to leave just a tiny little gap as I do this. I'll do that same thing on the other side. Okay, and your plane should look like this. And our next step is to locate the innermost diagonal crease. That's the one right next to the center. And look at the point where that crease intersects the top edge. That is one of your reference points. And you're going to fold so that your crease goes from that point down to this point right here. So you can see I'm just tacking on that point right there. And I wanna control these layers as I crease to this corner. And it should look just like that. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Here's my reference point. And there we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and unfold those two creases we just made. And now I'm going to fold down. You can see we have this horizontal crease already there. I'm just folding down along that existing crease and creasing all the way to the outer edges on these layers as well. Just like so. And now we're going to do a swivel fold. And I want you to notice this inner crease is already a valley crease and the one next to it's already a mountain crease. So as I kind of pull this in, I don't have to change the direction of any of these creases and I'm actually not making any new creases as I swing this edge in just like so and lie it flat. I didn't have to make any new creases in order to do that. So I'm just swinging this side in as well and lying it flat. And then you'll see we have this pocket right here behind all the layers. And we have these already existing tabs, which we can fold in behind everything else. Right like that, hold the layers together and fold that in behind everything else. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and fold the paper in half so that these layers are on the outside. And I'm going to start my wing crease just a little bit above the nose right here and have it slope up slightly toward the back. And having done one side, I'll just flip it over and fold the other side to match. And now we're just going to fold our fins. And our fins really aren't very big, but we want to make sure that the crease we make here is again parallel to that edge. It's just a judgment fold. So once you do one side, flip it over and fold your other side to match. And now all we have to do is we open these up, set the fins so that they are nice and vertical and we're going to go ahead and cut elevators into this wing. So I want you to imagine splitting this into thirds. So there's one third to the left of the scissors, a third in the middle, and then a third to the right. And you're going to just cut 
right along the intersections of those thirds. This is just a rough estimate, by the way. You don't have to be exact. And you're making your elevators, which now you can just bend up slightly on either side. And now we're going to revisit the canards. So you can see here are the canards. And we're going to make elevators for the canards in a similar fashion. I want you to just make two very small cuts. One just like that, one just like this. And these are the elevators for the canards. And you're actually going to bend these down rather than up because these are in front of the center of gravity on the plane so that for them to act like normal uh, elevators, you need to bend them down rather than up, which I know that's a little counterintuitive. So now here we have our 4.0. We're going to just slide the canards into the front clip, just like so, all the way as far up as they'll go. And then we're going to slide the main wing into this clip here. And you can adjust where this main wing sits along the shaft of the plane. And you can experiment exactly uh, with where you want this along the length of the plane. Basically, the farther back you have it, the faster your plane will fly, but also the more of a nose down tendency it will have, and you'll have to adjust the elevators more to compensate for that. And the farther forward you place it, it will have a higher angle of attack, fly a little more slowly, uh, and have a tendency to stall if you put it too far forward. So finding that right balance is a fun experiment, and you can actually change it depending on what flight characteristics you want. So with that said, thank you so much for watching, and good luck flying your planes.